In this tutorial, you'll see how to upgrade your ONTAP simulator to the very latest version of ONTAP that you could normally only run on a physical hardware platform. In the video, I'll be going from version 9.4 to 9.5, but this should also work for later versions also. I'm going to be following the step-by-step -step instructions in my How to Build a NetApp ONTAP Lab for free PDF you can download it for free from my website at www.flatbox.com. I'm working from the How to Build a NetApp Lab PDF as usual, and the section that you want to follow along with here is the optional upgrade clusters to the latest on tap version. And you can see the first thing to do there is to log in at netapp.com. So I will click on the link. And while that's loading, I'll just drag this PDF over to my other monitor out of the way. Okay, so when we land on the main page at netapp.com, we need to sign in to the support site here. So click on the sign in link up in the top right hand corner. And then usually it's going to ask you for your username and password when you click on the support link here. It's not going to ask me because I'm already signed in. Then to get the on tap image, click on downloads and then software. Then it's the very first option in here, which is on tap or data on tap. So click on the drop down to select a platform that the latest version of ONTAP is supported on. So I'll just take the AFF A200 and then click on go. Then you want to choose the latest version of ONTAP here. So as I'm recording this, the latest version is 9.5 release candidate one. So it's not general availability yet, but we can still run this in our simulator. Notice also there's a message here saying that this is going to move. So by the time that you see this video, it might have moved to a new location. It should be easy to find through Google anyway. Okay, so this is where it is right now. So I will click on the view and download button. And then when the page was noticed there's things like the release notes the upgrade express guide in here etc that can be useful i'm going to click on continue and then you can read the cautions and continue again read any other notifications and then the radio button that you've read and understood the issues on that page click on continue again then you'll land on the end user license agreement scroll down and accept that and then depending on whether you're in a restricted or a non-restricted country click on the link to download the software image so you see it downloading now i've actually already downloaded it to save time and if we look in Windows Explorer, I have got that in my downloads folder. That's the download that I completed already. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move that to my C1N1 folder in my NetApp Lab folder. The next thing that I need to do is I need to have an HTTP server that is able to serve that software image to my ONTAP clusters. So there are other software available. I'm going to use HFS. Let me drag the PDF back over here again so we can see where the link is. And I will scroll down to that page and you can see the link is here in the PDF. So I will click on that and then click on the download button and that will download it to my downloads folder again i've already downloaded this to save some time okay so i can close out of here and let me just drag the pdf over to my other monitor again so i can follow along with what to do here 
So next thing to do is to set up the HTTP server to serve that on tap image. And the that HFS HTTP server file, you don't actually have to install it on your laptop. It This is an executable that you can run directly. So just inside my downloads folder, I will double click on that to run the HTTP server directly. Then I want to allow access on all networks here when I get the warning message in Windows 10. Then the next thing I want to do is make sure that this is using the IP address that is connected to the lab. Because you've got your IP address connected to the lab, you've also got an IP address on your PC that's giving you your internet access. So to make sure that we're using the right one, I click on menu and then go down to IP address and make sure you select the 172.23.1.10 IP address that is the one that is connected to the lab. The next thing we need to do is to add the file that we want to serve. So let me just check where that is in the menu. That's in menu and then there it is, add files. So I click on add files and I browse to my C1N1 folder where I saved the software image and it's that one there, beginning with image and ending in TGZ. So I double click on that and my HTTP server is now ready to serve that to my ONTAP nodes. So the next thing to do actually is th there can be a problem with the Windows firewall blocking the file from getting downloaded from the HTTP server on your laptop down to your on tap nodes so we need to disable the windows firewall because i'm going to disable the windows firewall it's best to be safe and i'm going to disable my internet connection while i'm doing that as well so to do that i will go to control panel and then in control panel i'll go to the network and sharing center and then change adapter settings and then go to my network adapter that's connected to the ethernet to the internet sorry that is my wireless adapter on my pc i will right click on it and disable just to make sure i can't be attacked from the internet while my firewall is disabled i can then go back to the control panel by clicking it in here make sure i am viewing by icons and I want to go to the Windows Defender Firewall, then turn the Windows Defender Firewall on or off, and I'm going to turn off the firewall. That'll just make sure that the firewall is not going to block that traffic getting down to my ONTAP nodes, and click on OK. All right, so that looks like we've got all of the setup done. The next thing that I need to do is actually go to my nodes, start them up, and then I'm going to be able to download the image and do the upgrade. So for that, I go back to Windows Explorer and I need to start both the nodes in my first cluster. So I go to the C1N1 folder and double click on the C1N1 VMX file. That will start the first node and then do the same in the C1N2 folder for the node two in cluster one as well. And these should both start up. Let's check that that's happening. Yeah. Okay, so I can see I've got cluster one, node one, and cluster one, node two. And I want to start them both up at the same time because when I shut them down last time, I suspended them while they were in the running state. With your, your cluster one nodes, you always want to suspend them and then start them up at the same time so you don't get any high availability error messages because they can't find each other. Okay, so I've got both nodes up and running. I'm going to upgrade them one at a time. So I will do node one first. So I need to log in here. In fact, let me just make this full screen so you can see it more easily. So I log in on node one with my username of admin and my password of flackbox one. 
then the way that we're going to do the upgrade is from the boot menu. So I need to reboot my node. So the command for that is system node reboot. And this is node cluster 1-01. And I'm going to say ignore quorum warnings. Okay. Am I sure that I want to reboot? Yes. And hit enter. And then this will take a minute or so to start the reboot process. When it does, we need to be here watching it actually booting up because we're going to break in during the boot up process. We're going to break into the boot menu. So this can take a little while. So I'll pause the video here. And when it starts to boot up again, I'll restart the video. Okay, so my node is booting up. Now I'm going to hit enter to boot immediately. And then I'm going to wait for the prompt telling me to hit control C to break into the boot menu. I can see it there. So it's ready now. So I hit control C tells me the boot menu will be available. I have to wait another few seconds again, and then I'm going to see the boot menu. Okay, here it is. So to do the upgrade, the option that I want to take here is option number seven to install new software first. So I enter that and then it gives me a warning message. Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. Select the network port you want to use for the download. I want to use my management port, which is E0C. That's the default here. So you can see I can just hit enter to accept that default. Then it tells me that I need to reboot again now. So I say yes. Now, when it boots up again, it's going to do a special reboot here where it's going to boot up into the upgrade process and it's going to carry on asking me questions about how to do the upgrade. I can hit enter to boot immediately there. And then I just need to wait a little while and then it's going to bring up a, a command line wizard, which is going to guide me through the rest of the upgrade process. It might take a little while. We have to wait before that shows up. So I'll pause the video again now. Okay, that didn't take long at all. And the wizard is now asking me for the IP address that we're going to use on port E0C. I'll use the normal node management IP address for node one. That was 172.23.1.12. The subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. The default gateway is 172.23.1.254. Now, we're actually going to be connecting to the HTTP server on my laptop on the same subnet here. So we don't actually need the VIOS router to be up and running, but we enter the default gateway address anyway. What is the URL for the package? Okay, let's have a look at our HTTP server again to get that. So I'll go to HFS and that is the path that I want to use there. So let's just minimize or make the two windows smaller so I can see them both at the same time. And I'll drag this down here a bit. Okay, I'm not able to copy and paste in the VMware console, so I'm going to have to type this out. So I'll go back into my VMware window and the path is HTTP colon slash slash 172.23.1.10 slash 95RC1 underscore Q underscore image dot TGZ and hit enter. What's the username? We don't have any username configured, so I can just hit enter to leave it blank here. It will then check for connectivity to the HTTP server. And I can see it downloading. And if we have a look at both windows, you can see that in the HTTP server, it has received the traffic. So it is downloading the package now. It's going to download it and then it's going to run through the install, which is going to take a bit of time. So I'll pause the video again and come back when the ONTAP node is prompting me for the next input. 
Okay, I've got the next prompt. Let's just make this full screen again. And it's asking me, do I want the newly installed software to be used as the default on subsequent reboots? Yes, I do. So I'll say yes to that. And then it needs to reboot again now. So I'll say yes to reboot it now. This will take a little bit of time again. So let's pause the video again and we'll come back after the reboot has completed. Okay, system has come up. I've got my login prompt. I'm going to log in, username admin, and the password flatbox1. The next thing that happens is you can see that I've got a warning. The cluster is in a mixed version state. That's because we've just upgraded the first node. We've still got the second node to do. I want to check that the upgrade was successful on node one first. So to do that, I need to go into the advanced mode. So the command for that is set advanced. Yes, I want to go into advanced mode. And then the command to check is system node upgrade dash revert and then show. And okay, that all looks good. I can see that the upgrade was successful. Now, you don't need to do this on the hardware platforms, but I found that it's more reliable on the simulator if we upgrade the node again. Sorry, not upgrade, I mean reboot the node again at this point. So the command I'm going to use for that is system node reboot cluster 1-01 and ignore the quorum warnings. Notice that I've actually got two options here now because the system has been upgraded to 9.5. So it's ignore code and warnings, hit enter, and then yes. So that my first node is going to reboot again. After my first node has finished rebooting, then we'll move on to upgrading the second node. I'll pause the video again while this one reboots. I'll see you when it comes back up. Okay, there's my login prompt. So node one is back up again. I can now upgrade node two and I'm going to do it exactly the same way as I upgraded node one. So let's find node two here and I'll maximize that window. I'll log in to node two. And then I need to reboot into the boot menu. So the command to reboot is system node reboot. This is cluster 1-02 and ignore quorum warnings. Yes, I do want to reboot. We'll give this a minute to start the reboot process. When it starts coming back up, then I'll start the video again so you can see me breaking into the boot menu again. Okay, the node is booting again, so I will hit enter to boot immediately. I will watch for the prompt to hit control C to break into the boot menu. There it is. So I hit control C and then I'll just have to wait a few more seconds and the boot menu should be showing up anytime around about now there we go okay um number seven again to install the new software first so i'm just doing the same as i did on node one yes i want to continue the network port is e0c which is the default so i can hit enter and then it's going to tell me that it's going to reboot again so i say yes to accept that and it's going to reboot again now and after it reboots, it's going to continue on with the upgrade process. I'll hit enter to boot immediately. And this is going to take a little bit longer. So I'll pause the video again and start it when it starts asking me questions about the upgrade. Okay, it's asking me the IP address to use for port E0C. I'll use 172.23.1.13. That's my node to management address. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. IP address or default gateway is 172.23.1.254. The URL, let's have a look in our HTTP server again. 
So here is node two, and there's the URL up there. So same again, it is HTTP 172.23.1.10 slash 95RC1 underscore Q underscore image dot TGZ. The username, there isn't any. I just hit enter to leave that blank. And it is now going to connect out to there. In fact, let me just make that smaller again. And you'll see the message showing up on the HTTP server again. And it is downloading the package. So again, just like what happened on Node 1, it will download the package and then it will run through the upgrade process. I'll see you back here again when that has completed. Okay, it's asking if I want the newly installed software to be used as the default on subsequent reboots. Yes, I do. And it needs to reboot it again. So yes, I do want to reboot now. Actually, while it's doing that, we're done with the HTTP server. So I can go and enable the firewall again and then open my internet connection again. So let's do that now. So... I'll break out of there and go back to control panel again. So let me open up control panel. And then we'll go to the Windows Defender firewall and turn the firewall on or off. Turn it back on again for both private and public networks and click on OK. And then I can go back to the control panel and view by icons go to the network and sharing center and then change my adapter settings and then re-enable my wireless adapter so i get my internet connectivity back again okay so that's my networking on my own laptop all set back again we just need to check that the upgrade completes now so let's look back at node 2 i can see that it is still booting up here so this might take another minute or two longer. So I'll pause the video again. When you come back, we should be all done and upgraded and we just need to check that everything is working okay. Okay, there is my login prompt again. So I will log in as admin. And I want to check that the upgrade went okay. So I'll go to advanced mode again with a set advanced command. And the command I want to use is system node upgrade dash revert show. And there we go. I'm seeing all upgrades successful again. So that all looks good. Let's also open up system manager and check that I can connect to the cluster and everything looks good there. So I'll go to https 172.23.1.11 i'm going to get a warning message for the certificate so i'll add the exception and confirm the security exception and just wait here for system manager to open and then log in as admin and enter my password and then the system manager dashboard should open and i can actually click on the help button here and click on about and you can see that we're now running on on tap version 9.5 Okay, so that was everything. That was how to upgrade the cluster. We've upgraded cluster one here. Do the same thing to upgrade cluster two as well. And then in the next video, we'll carry on with setting up the rest of the lap.